Hi, Chris Morris here. I'd like to show you how I use Google Forms for a formative assessment practice, that is self-evaluation. In the Eastern Region this year, we've had a particular focus around assessment that moves learning forward. And one of the key tenets or enduring understandings from our work is this concept of assessment that moves learning forward. A great book which I'd recommend is Lynn Sharrett's Putting Faces on the Data. And in that book she states, the purpose of assessment is to guide the students learning and to inform the teacher's instruction. Assessment even at the conclusion of the year is not an endpoint, but rather for teacher and student, it is evidence of progress made and a map of where and how to proceed. I suspect that this notion of assessment would challenge many people's generalised understanding of assessment. For some it might be assessment is used to put a mark in a mark book and report to parents. But have we really thought about the notion of assessment that informs teacher practice? And so this is where I've uh, developed a neat little uh, application for Google Forms in the uh, formative assessment realm. So if you look at uh, a Google Form you can see here I've just created a Google Form from my drive and I've called the Google Form self-evaluation. I've put in a field called date okay because I want my students to record the date for which they are evaluating their progress towards a learning intention. Now you'll see here at the moment I haven't put in an opportunity for them to put their name. I think for this to work well I would create the form in the teacher domain that is at sid.catholic.edu.au and I would uh, administer the, the form from the student domain. The reason for that is you can see up the top here if the form resides in the student domain, then it will automatically collect their username. A note, if you create the form in the teacher domain, then it will only collect the respondent CEO username of the teacher. Okay, so that's a bit of a, a caveat here in terms of using Google Forms. So you can see here I've got the first question. I'm currently learning about so we want our students to be able to articulate you know, I'm learning about Pythagoras's theorem or I'm learning about the frames in visual arts or I'm learning about uh, anatomical movement in PDHPE so uh, here is a question that uh, they can articulate that and it's important that they are able to articulate what they're learning about and you can see that is a required question the second question is a Likert scale which you're probably familiar with in terms of Google Forms. You can see it comes under the advanced part there. How am I going with my learning on a scale of 1 to 5? Where am I at with regard to the learning intention? And some of the work of uh, Dylan William and uh, you know Hattie would suggest that there must be a really clear, succinct learning intention that the students are able to articulate for each lesson, for each unit of work. You can see here there's a scale, really unsure, I need some assistance, too excellent, I could teach the class and again I've made that a required question. How do I know? It's important the students be able to articulate how they know where they're at with their learning. So the reason I put down a five was because you know I really understood the formula associated with Pythagoras' theorem, I could apply it to real world examples. I did, you know, 15 examples from the textbook. I have a really good understanding of the concepts around Pythagoras' theorem. So it's important for them to be able to articulate that. And obviously, this is a qualitative question that the teacher could analyze. The next part of the self evaluation is how can I improve? So it's always asking the student to reflect around, all right, well, you've got to a point in terms of your uh, learning intention. How can you go to the next level? And I think that's a, a very good question. Uh, 
the opportunity here is for students to add another part there. You can see this is simply just a checkbox, so students could have multiple aspects that they choose here. How confident do I feel about moving forward with my learning? And again, it's a scale there. Okay, so when we're distributing this to our students, you could embed it in your Google site, your class page, you could have a, uh, a funky QR code which links to the form and if you go to view live form, you can see that that brings up the, the self-evaluation uh, live form. Now, if you wanted to use a QR code, I'd recommend the Google URL shortener. I just downloaded there. It's available from the Chrome store. If you click on that, it generates a QR code. So you could actually print that and put that in your class or have it on the student's desk laminated just for them to regularly check in um, as to where they're at in terms of their own self-assessment. So you can see that's what the live form looks like. We'll scroll down and that's all looking good at the moment. Okay, now obviously the understanding of the use of Google Forms is that uh, the form feeds into a corresponding results sheet or a spreadsheet. So if I go to view responses, so you can see I've got, had a few friends fill this out and um, the great benefit of Forms again is that it's uh, time stamped, it's you know date stamped, you're asking students to uh, articulate what date they did. Now, here is where it gets, uh, I think, quite beneficial in terms of the teacher being able to quickly make some sort of judgment around the lesson. So you can see um, the question E, how am I going with my learning? You can see that it's applied uh, some colored backgrounds to the responses. So the student, when completing the Google form, answered this question with a two or a four and you can see the corresponding uh, color shading. That's an automated process using conditional formatting. I'm just going to show you how to uh, how to do that now. If I highlight the column, column H, how confident do I feel in moving forward with my learning? I'm going to format, I'm going to conditional formatting and this is where you can put in some rules around uh, how the data matches a set criteria and the corresponding action that it performs, namely colouring a cell. So you can see here uh, I'm going with greater than or equal to 4, so I believe that 4 or 5 is a green colour. So I'm quite happy with that uh, level of performance at the moment and hopefully my students are able to articulate as to why they uh, self-assess themselves at that particular level. I'm going to uh, add another rule. So I'm going to go with uh, is equal to 3 and we're going to go with a amber colour. And then the final one is less than or equal to 2 and the background colour is going to be red. So because I have selected column H, you can see there the range is HH. What's going to happen here, and you can see that's automatically recalculated and corresponding uh, shading has occurred. What's going to happen is every time a student uh, completes his self-assessment, um, all the way down throughout the form, we will see that colour coding um, which uh, gives us a really nice quick snapshot as to where they're at. So just to uh, demonstrate how we could use this, so today is uh, March and the day is the 10th. I'm currently learning about uh, the parabola. How am I going? Oh, you know, I'm a three. I'm not too bad. Why do I think I'm there? Um, I understand the concept, but I'm struggling to apply it to new examples. How can I improve? I need some more concrete examples, more practice. Um, maybe if I reinforce um, my learning through a YouTube video, or, you know, how-to experts, whatever. Um, let me go with those at the moment. 
how confident do I feel about moving forward with my learning? Yeah, I'm a pretty confident person. That's where I am at the moment. So I hit submit. Okay, so we come back to our spreadsheet here and you can see it's collected the parabola. It's given me a uh, amber light there and a green light there. So uh, in terms of this concept of formative assessment, assessment that moves learning forward, I think uh, the use of Google Forms for this process is uh, a really, really nice and simple way of gathering student data as to where their learning intentions are at. Hope you enjoyed this video.